This is my 2014 Victory Cross Country Tour. Today, I want to install a variable timing gear on this. I just happen to have one here, and I'm going to show you how I install this into the bike. This is not a discussion about octane, pinging, low end torque. This is just a video on how I install it into the bike. So I will show you first what the timing marks mean on this and then we'll get started installing it. So this is the timing gear here. As you can see on the back, your camshaft fits in here and there's a keyway. So it only goes in one way and then you bolt it through the middle hole. On the front side, you can see there are lines. When these two lines here are lined up from the outer to the inner portion, it is at zero degrees. You can see there's also a positive side and a negative side. These lines on the positive sides, when you turn the outer gear and you line up the first set of lines, that is plus one degree because we are on the plus side. When you turn it a little more, you line up the second set of lines, you are at plus two, and so forth. You can line up three. When they're lined up, you're at plus three. Plus four, all the way up to plus eight. You've got eight sets of lines. Wherever the lines line up, that is the amount of timing that you have added onto it. Same thing with the negative side. We are back at zero. These lines are lined up. We're back at zero. If we move it this side, we are on the negative. So when we line up these two lines, we are at negative one, minus one degree. Same thing, we can move over to the second set of lines, you're at minus two degrees, and so forth, all the way to minus five. So we want to start, I'm gonna start, at plus four degrees. So I'm gonna take one, two, three, the fourth line, and I'm going to line it up so they are perfectly lined up and then I will tighten down the bolts and that will be set at plus four degrees. The timing gear is behind the cam cover right here, right hand side of the bike, just inside of the brake pedal. So let's zoom in on this and we'll get a closer look. The cam cover here is held in place by six bolts. These are five millimeter hex and you can pretty well get into all of them except that bottom one down here. That's kind of in the way from the brake pedal and the floorboard. Some people do it. I pre prefer to remove the whole floorboard. There will be two bolts underneath it. Eight millimeter uh, hex will fit into them. I'll show you those two bolts and the whole thing comes off. Now be careful when you remove all this the only thing attaching this whole system to your bike is the back brake line. You do not want to damage it. You don't want to bend it or stress it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some wood underneath it and just rest this whole system onto the blocks of wood, keeping it up off the ground, having no stress on that line. And then we'll have easy access to the gear inside the cover. Underneath the bike, you've got this support arm here that holds your floorboard to the frame. This here is the adjustment screw that will move forward or backwards your entire brake pedal. Underneath it are two 8 millimeter hex bolts. These are the two we're going to remove. That will take this entire arm and floorboard, complete with the brake arm, off the frame of the bike. We will then place it down onto some platform and keep the strain off the brake line. So I put a cardboard box underneath and um, I'll put a piece of wood on top of it and I'm going to undo those two 8 millimeter bolts and I'm just going to rest this on top of it. It won't be able to come out far but enough to get into the cover. These two bolts down there have Loctite on them so they're going to be a little tough at first but they'll come out. I loosen them up so they're just barely in. I'm going to hang on to the brake pedal and I'm just turning them by hand. You can see the bolt, there's the Loctite that's on it.
the second one, and this thing comes off. I'm going to place a block of wood underneath it just to hold it up in place. It just gives enough room to get the screws. Now that we've got a little bit of room to work here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the oil dipstick. That's just going to get in the way of this. So I'm going to take this out and what I'm going to do is stuff some rags in this area and what that's going to do is prevent anything from falling inside the oil filler and if there's any oil inside the cam cover it'll just keep it off the bike and now this is a five millimeter hex and I'm going to start removing these Now that all the bolts are off, there's two pins, one on this one and one on this one. So you have to pull out straight. You can kind of wiggle it a bit. We'll try not to ruin the gasket because I want to continue using this gasket because I may end up taking this off several times to tune the gear in order to put it at the right number that I want. Also, there's wiring right here. This goes into your pickup coil that rides on top of the timing gear. So when we pull this off, we won't be able to go far with it, so we're just going to put it down here. So we'll just kind of wiggle it back and forth while pulling out, and it should pop right off. There's a pickup coil right here with the wiring going through. We have to be careful with that. And there is our stock timing gear. This is a 13 millimeter socket. I'm going to take this center bolt off. Now, I should be able to simply grab that gear wiggle it out and it should just come right off. Before we go any farther the threaded hole in here does not go all the way through so any Loctite or anything else that the factory put on the bolt is still in that hole. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use uh, a Q-tip sprayed with some cleaner and I'm going to go in there and I'm going to try to get out all that stuff in there just to make it easier I'm also going to clean off the threads of this bolt and I'll put on some fresh Loctite. So now I got my new variable timing wheel and I'm going to put it in. Remember the keyway. It only goes in one way. Wiggle it in all the way until it bottoms out. You don't want to put stress on it when you put the, the bolt back in you could damage that keyway so make sure that it's in all the way I'm going to put some blue Loctite on the bolt now this bolt should go in fairly easy you can see I can still turn it with my fingers if you're having a hard time turning this, then it's not clean enough. Go back in, clean out that hole, clean out the, the, the threads on the nut, or on the bolt, and uh, it should just go in. There's no reason, if you have to put a lot of force on it, then there's something wrong. I'm just going to turn it, it's not even tight yet, 
Now I'm going to use my torque wrench. I have a torque wrench here. This is set up for 17 foot-pounds. 17 foot-pounds for the center bolt, 15 foot-pounds for the two outer adjustment bolts. Now what I'm going to do to torque this down, I don't want that wheel to spin. Some people put a screwdriver in between the teeth and uh, just to keep it from going. I don't really like doing that. So what I've got here is I've got one of these little rubber wrenches, strap wrench, and I'm going to simply put it over the wheel. I'll pull it tight. And this way, I can hold this down while I'm torquing. Again, I'm torquing this to 17 foot-pounds. Right there. 17 foot-pounds. Okay. I've got the center bolt with blue Loctite torqued down to 17 foot-pounds. I got the two outside adjuster bolts tightened down to 15. I have it set up for plus four on the timing wheel and now it's just a matter of putting it back together. Look at your gasket, okay? Mine looks good. No, no breaks, no cracks, no uh, lifting. So I'm going to continue using it. I did, however, purchase a second gasket just in case because I'm probably going to take this off and on several times to adjust the wheel or if I find this is perfect, it's just going to stay there. So now take your cover, watch your wiring, your pickup coil, make sure that the two pins go in the top and just simply push it back in. Now we can start putting back on our six cover bolts using the five millimeter hex socket. I'm just going to put them in hand tight first. They are to be torqued down to 115 inch pounds. That's inch pounds, not foot pounds. Be aware of that. They're not very tight. I have my torque wrench set up for 115 inch pounds. And I'm going to go through them all. and torque them. We can now take out the rag, put back in the dipstick. So now all that's left is to put on my floorboard. I'm going to put blue Loctite on these bolts and I'm going to tighten them down to 35 foot-pounds as per specifications. So there it is, all done. Now just to take it out for a test spin, may have to do a few little tweaks to it, but I think all in all I'm going to be happy with it. Thank you very much for watching. Have a good day.